Hey guys, what's up? In today's tutorial, we are going to take a look at the three different percussions that is often used in melodic techno tracks. So there will be toms, there will be driving percussions, and there will be ghost percussions. And I will uh, explain why they are important and actually also how you use them in your tracks. But before we start with the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you get notifications when we make a new video, video like this. Other than that, let's take a look. So I have prepared kind of a both finish uh, loop here because I thought it would be a nice start and then we can add the toms and percussions on top of that. So the loop actually sounds like this. So it is quite Bosnian loop, I will say. So I thought, yeah, melodic techno. Uh, this could be a really <laughs> nice example to put percussions on. Uh, the first thing that I would like to do here, though, actually adding a uh, tom, which is also used quite a lot when when you have this type of uh, lead sound, because this type of bass lead sound occupies a lot of space in your spectrum. So if you try to make another bass on top of this, it won't work. So you need something on the low end. Uh, and work nicely with your kick so that it's filled up by that. And this is the reason that actually you can utilize tom sound in this type of uh, setup. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to find a, I will say, tom sample. Let's go for the production music live and see if they have a nice tom for us. Uh, da, da, da. Let's just write Tom. So I want this kind of 808 Tom, which doesn't have too much, uh, I would say, uh, harmonics. I feel like this may work. So what I'm going to do, just put that, let's put it here so that we don't miss it. And then we can get a drum rack and then actually put this one into that. The reason that I'm doing this actually, I'm going to tune it down and up depending on what I want to have. So let's play just kick and then let's try to put the tom around let's do something like this i'm definitely sure there could be one here maybe here Here maybe? No, maybe here. And then maybe I can just repeat this. You can definitely make much more complicated uh, uh, patterns, but at the moment I'm, I'm going to start really simple and then maybe we can change a little bit afterwards. What I'm going to do, put an EQ. It's actually quite snappy Tom as well. I'm thinking of putting kind of a drum bus so that we can see if we can beef it up a little bit. Let's put into the kick group so that we can process them together. Let me see if I have a, I have all the processing here. Much better. I 
And what I'm going to do now, actually tune it up a little bit and then see if I can actually play around a bit more melodic. So what you do here is just copying, pasting this one here. And then I would often start with like transposing three uh, minor third and see if that works. It's kind of works. And then I will definitely think copying one more time and transposing into the seventh. This one will be probably sounding quite high. And this one could be like a very introduced uh, like second loop and then make it a bit more complicated. Again, I'm not really trying to find super advanced, super nice loop at the moment. I'm just trying to show how you can utilize it. Maybe this can be this and we can take away this. This one probably should be a bit shorter. Let's try this. Let's play with the track, then we can see if this works actually. This one is hard to hear simply because we have the movement there. And I feel like the lead is a bit too loud at the moment. Let's try something different here. It's a bit too too much. Like you try to, you have to keep this part a bit. Um, I will say simple. Let's try again. I feel like we are not having enough uh, beef here. Let's try to see the, the tune of the kick so that we can actually fix that. We are on the F. C. Let's fix this. We are around F at the moment. We can detune slightly. Yeah, I think this is F. And then of course I will do the same thing so that we are in the tune, transpose it three up let's try again mm, 
much much better simply because now we are in the tune with the kick and then I will definitely do the same thing here so and let's add a little bit boom Let's try together with the kick again. It's important that actually you get this one, right? Because this is your this is your low end, more or less, kick and tom. And it, it can take a little bit longer than usual. So I wanted to really pick something that is not that easy so that we can I can show you how we can fix it so that you can also learn this part. I think this is good enough. So I think again let's play with the main uh, lead sound so that we, so that let's see if it really works. It definitely gives this kind of like a really uh, I. Uh, like a tribal feeling to the track, but not really hot tri tribal house feeling, but more like a percussive, um, I don't know, to go to the war feeling. I don't understand, I don't know how to explain this part, but probably you get what I mean. The second thing now we can do here as we made our low end with the tom is that putting a driving percussions. This is actually used a lot and it, you are free to use any type of percussions that you want to use at this part. So it could be like a clap sample, it could be like a clay, it could be like a bongo, whatever you want to have. Uh, it's completely up to your taste, I would say. So let's put uh, again drum rack. The idea here is just find a percussion that is interesting. So let's go back to Production Music Live. Let's see if they have anything interesting. This, maybe. This, maybe. This is probably. Maybe. So I don't want to go too, in, too much into detail. So what we are going to do, basically, do something like this. Good enough. At the moment it will sound really weird, but we are going to fix that. I think this one will be the working valve. What you're going to do, you can actually play with the um, velocity here so that you can have a little bit like a more, I will say, something like this so that you have like this build up. And let's fix that here as well. So it's more like groovy. You can definitely add a groove and play with more, but I don't want to put, go into too much details. What I want to do is make this sound a bit more interesting. You can add velocity here 
and make it a bit different or there's a better version with which where you can actually add a vocoder first make the sound a bit more interesting i will definitely shorten this up as well let's try already getting there but this is still not enough what I'm going to do is actually add an LFO so that we can actually get a bit movement in the sound so let's go for the max for live and just type LFO here I think it's here and put it here so what we are going to do actually play with this uh, dry wet signal or the release depending on what we are aiming for let's play with the dry wet first and see how it sounds And let's try release. I think release makes much more sense. It gives this kind of more percussive sound. So we are going to map this to release. And let's put this into the kind of a third, something like this. Maybe a bit faster. This one is much more interesting, this sound, basically. This one is just the same all the time. On the other hand, this one. Much more interesting. And then, at this point, it depends on the taste. Of course, we are looking for, I will definitely go for a kind of a delay to see if I can make it a bit more stereo. When the, uh, I will say the release opens up, when you get these really nice highs, and you are also like ping-ponging those highs because we are picking the like a bit more higher area of the sound, so it just splashes on the sides of the uh, uh, headphones, and it's a really nice experience, and it gives this kind of really pleasurable feeling, I will say. And it's quite a simple trick, but it's quite effective for this type of tracks. And finally, I make just putting into the side into the kick because it's always on the background even though we play with the velocity it is it is still not really that enough i would definitely go for like a look ahead 10 milliseconds and then put into the kick and let's volume this down a bit Really, really nice background sound, background percussions or background driving percussions for this type of track. So in the end, you can actually utilize any sound that you want. Like you can use a clap, hi-hat, you can use like any percussion sample that you have. It's up to you up to, up to you, and it's up to decide which sound actually fits better in the track. Like we did here, we had four of them and then we played around and picked the one that passes most. In my own tracks, I actually have like 30, 30 of them here and then I try to find that passes best. This will also uh, minimize the amount of time you put your uh, into your mixing session. And the last one is actually also quite uh, used quite widely, and it's actually called the ghost percussions. Uh, I will say, and it's quite simple to do it. The trick here most of the time is actually finding the sound that is that is passing the track. So we are going to do the same trick over here. Find a drum sample, <coughs> sorry, drum rack. And then we go for the uh, kind of a percussive sound that we are... Okay, that was wrong. Let's do it this way. Drum rack. And let's find the percussive sample here. I want something that I can tune down and put it like a 
hid on the background. This may work. This may work and this may work. Let's just try with this one. And then I'm going to put uh, Pro R file filter. The reason that I'm putting it is that because I really like this one for this type of ghostly sounds, it really works nicely. And of course, you can get the not the same but similar results with Ableton's own reverb. But to, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use this one. So let's try to hit someone here. The trick here is actually making it extremely, extremely wet, like almost 100%, we can play around a little bit and put the distance close as possible so that when it hits, it still feels like somewhere around us. And you also decay, decrease the decay rate a little bit and then you play around and you want to even put it clean and dark at the same time. So let's try. You can definitely feel it's close, but it's kind of super dark. Let's push it a bit here. More. This is fine, let's try the other ones. I wanna just tune this down and try if it works. And shorten this up. Maybe shorten the play as well. Let's try this. I think it was this. Yeah. So most of the times when you use this kind of, uh, I will say, percussive sounds you are losing them like it when you are leading into the next bar or when you're leading into the kind of say the break or the verse at the moment we have too many variation in the tom here so using it here will be just overkill so i i will try to come up with another idea that may work in the middle it is harder to do this utilize this but we'll see if we can find it Or maybe we can even use the rhythmic element here, so... This will probably work. Yeah. And then of course you can make it a little bit darker. And then the delay could be really nice to put it like an in-your-face style.
I feel like a slight saturation will definitely help here. We can even try overdrive and put the drive a little bit lower. Let's try here, probably. And of course, after that part, you have your clap, and it will probably just sound right. Let's just try to put A to A to for the sake of completion. Yeah, this will work. Let's put these guys in the second line over here. I would definitely think something like this. So you have this kind of first break and then of course you are having the sports percussions and here you are adding your club. Basically club kind of talks to your ghost percussions because of this. Take a listen. Maybe you can put this up a bit. Yeah, this will definitely work. Yeah, I think, again, it was a long tutorial uh, because I want to show things a little bit in detail, so it takes a bit more time. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next time. Goodbye.